We're now going to cover lists, another data structure that is widely uh, used in many programming languages. So the constructor of a list is, you guessed it, it's called list. Uh, and the idea is that you can use zero or more expressions and each expression is going to be evaluated and it, the result is going to be uh, placed in the in the list. So we can write, let me copy paste these two examples. If I may, okay. I'm going to open a new file, code list.rec. Okay, so now I have two lists, right? Element zero is going to be this. And then element one. And then element two. So the easiest way to create a list is you do list 10, 20, 30. Okay. If I run it, so here we have three examples, right? So you can put as many elements as you want. So you could go like 60, 70, 80, and so on. And next you have a list. You can put function calls as well because they are expressions. So nothing too surprising. And as you can see, the results are all as expected. Uh, notice that to create an empty list, you just call the function list without parameter or without arguments. Also, when it's rendered, you have this little quote here. That's how you know it's a runtime value, I guess. Um, okay, so now what are the accessors? So I'm gonna show you two accessors. First one is to test if a list is empty. Uh, so I'm gonna add a test, so therefore I'm gonna copy this. Okay. Okay, the two pa tests pass. So what we have here is, is this list empty. So empty is a function that takes an expression as a parameter or takes one, uh, has one parameter. Uh, and then what it's going to do, it's going to test if the uh, value in the parameter is uh, empty or not. So the second case, the list is empty. In the first case, the list is not empty. So if we run it, have this, and if we were to change this to false, for instance, oh, what is false? Is ah, okay, it's confused. It wasn't like how is it running falsely? Okay, now you see that there's an error. So if I change this to true, because the empty list is empty. Right, so we create and everything is fine. Okay. So next thing we want to do, the other constructor is, oh, I didn't show the other constructor. The other constructor is, um, it's called rest. So if you do rest of, let, let us define a list. Define L1, so I'm creating a variable. I'm assigning this list to the variable L1, and I'm checking if L1 is empty. Messed up parentheses somewhere. Oh, here, of course. Okay, now I run it again. I'm printing out this value. Let me actually comment this out because it's kind of annoying the output. Okay, so now another thing that is not in the slides, but we'll see it 
uh, in the next set lesson, but I want to include it right now in this video. So if we do rest, what it does is it takes uh, all the elements of the list except for the first one. So let's see, L is this and rest of L is this. L1, sorry. Okay, and we can even do rest of rest of L1. Okay, and we can do even more rest of rest of rest of L1. And eventually you get to the empty list. And if you try to do rest of empty, uh, up, of list, uh, you get an error. Because you cannot call the rest of an empty list. Okay, so this is um, examples for rest. And finally, let me skip over this. So next thing I want to cover is um, there's another construct. So this is an accessor, right? Because it's just reading the contents of a list. Uh, actually, it is a constructor, right? Because it is constructing a list, sorry. Um, it kind of depends on how you see it. So technically, you can think of REST as actually an accessor because of what I'm going to explain in the next slide. But um, but because it constructs a list, we can consider it to be a constructor. Okay, so the final example I want to show you is uh, empty. So what is this example? So there's two ways to define the empty list. One is with list. The other one is the variable empty. As you can see, it, it renders in the same way with this quote open in close parentheses. Okay. So actually, we can write an example, a test, sorry, that checks if they are equal. And we can confirm that they are with this test, right? Is the empty list the same as equal, as empty, sorry. And we show here that they, they are indeed the same or equal. Okay. So finally, it's a small digression on um, how lists are implemented in Racket. It's an important digression because this is a subtlety of Racket that actually might introduce uh, bugs or confusion. So I want to cover it. Um, and the basic idea is that in Racket, um, again, because of this Lisp ancestry. Um, lists are actually represented as pairs. So what you have is you have a, an element which is the empty list, uh, as you've seen, that is rendered as the quote, open and close parenthesis. Um, and that is the empty list. And then if you want to represent a list with a single element, what you do is you create a pair where you put a value on the left and on the right hand side, you place the empty list. So if you add elements on the left, um, or sorry, by convention, a list is represented as these nested pairs where on the right-hand side most you have the empty list and then you place all the elements to the left and you read it from left to right. right? So on the outermost you have a pair and on the right-hand side you always have a pair, a pair, a pair until you reach empty. But on the left-hand side you always have a value. So left value, right, another list, uh, sorry, another pair or another list, kind of depends on how you want to see it. Um, and this is the idea behind a linked list, as you will. Um, so whenever you write list of one, two, three, four, technically is the same as writing cons, 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 cons. So let me write it. So if you do check equal, Right, and if you do list of one, two, three, that's the same as writing cons of one, cons of two, cons of three, cons of four. Then you write empty. And 
they are exactly the same thing. As you can see, the, te the error didn't show up, so that's fine. So if I rename this to 10, notice that they're rendered in the same way. I just rename this value to 3, and the error goes away. Okay? So this is something important because, you know, a pair is also a list, and that's sometimes confusing. Um, but not all, not all lists are pairs. So if you were to do the reverse, so let's kind of do the reverse. So the reverse would be uh, cons, where you do cons, where you do cons, one, two, three, four, where you do cons, and then you would do one, and then, uh, sorry, empty, and then one, and then cons like this, and then two, and then three, and then four. Okay, so this would be the reverse, right? Uh, where we, instead of adding to the left, now I'm putting the elements on the right and putting the empty here. Uh, and if I try to, first let's render this or print it to the screen and you see empty on the left, left hand side most and then you put one and two and three and four and then I can check uh, is this equal to the list list one two three four um, if I run it it says no and they r appear differently right but here it's the same so that is just to say that if you have something uh, that the order in which you nest the pairs matters for racket and uh, the way lists are represented are a specific convention that has to be followed for it to be perceived as a list and if you misorder things they're no longer a list okay um, and then you may be wondering will first of cons one empty work oh sorry i didn't talk about first ah, okay yeah i didn't introduce first and rest so i talked about rest right rest returns uh, the, the the all the elements but the first so there's actually this cool function called first let me show it next introducing the accessor uh, first so if i do um, first, I can write a test first, Let's check equal. Okay, so what first does is given a list, uh, list one, two, three, four, it returns the first element. Right, so in this case, in, the, in this list, it would be one. Um, so if I were to run this, uh, wait, so check, check. So this, of course, fails. Okay, but um, here, if I run it, oops, I g this passes, right? Because first returns, given a list, returns the first element. So if I were to write um, a list that has uh, 10, 20, 30, and 40, now it should return 10. Right, just so it's not, there's no confusion there. Okay. Um, now, okay, so now we've looked at first and we've looked at rest. But because a list is uh, just represented as as pairs, um, so if we do check equal of cons um, of cons, not cons, sorry, car of list ten, twenty, thirty, forty, this would also work, right? Because if because of how a list is represented. If you do car, you would get the first element. So one way to implement uh, first is actually to implement it with with the function car. As you can see, uh, the test passes. Okay. Um, okay. So secondly, check equal. When I looked at actually, let me go back up. Uh, so I had this example right where I showed you what is the rest. 
So, if you think about it, because lists are nested, rest is just going to be CDR because the second element of a pair that of a list is going to be the rest of the list, right? Which is highlighted in blue. I'm talking about this outermost uh, pair. Okay, because again, lists are represented as pairs, so there's these subtleties. And if you by mistake use con the CAR and CDR, you're uh, kind of getting either the first element of the list or the rest of the list. So um, to this end, we can write another test called check equal, and we can test if a CDR of L1 is the same as rest of L1, uh, which is true, right? If we run this, it passes where rest and CDR return the same. However, rest must be applied to functions, to lists only, to things that behave like lists. So if I were to do uh, rest of uh, cons one, two, I would get an error because it's saying it's expecting a list but you sent me a pair. So this is something to note. Okay, so function rest can only be applied to lists, not pairs. Again, because pairs are more general than lists. This is kind of a confusing thing. I wish they were different data structures, honestly. It would simplify many things. And in fact, in, in uh, uh, further ahead when uh, in some homework assignments where we don't need pairs uh, I just disallow CAR and CDR because they're really super confusing to use no one remembers what they mean um, and there's no really a point in using them okay um, this is mostly what I wanted to say this is the example I just showed you uh, and that's it for this lesson I hope you had fun bye